good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, good young people of the tube. Hope well today, hope you're feeling grand and always well in your world. Hello there, everybody. I've just made myself laugh before I started on the camera, so forgive me, people of the tube. Anyway, hello, everybody. A uh, bit of a yeah, bit of a change from the last video. Uh, well, the last couple of videos where um, I'm still not in a very good place in my head, but I'm just like, yeah, yeah. We'll 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 get through it. Anyway. It's not about that today, people of Tube. Um, today's video, people of Tube, we are revisiting my 1977 Marshall Master Lead combo. Why? I hear you cry, Dave, when you've already done a video on it. Why are you doing it again? Tell me, boy! Tell me now! Exactly. I will tell you now. So, the reason I'm doing it again is when I got this amp in 2021, I was I, I, I was using a different microphone. I wasn't using the SM57. I was using, a, I want to call it a Sennheiser. I don't know if it was. It was it, it was this weird looking flat mic. It's, you know, it's good, but I did the initial video of this amp with that, with that uh, microphone and... I soon discovered, and I think I did a video on this where I did a shootout between the SM57 and it. I don't know if I did. I'm pretty sure I did. I don't remember. I soon discovered that that microphone was adding loads of top end onto whatever amp I was miking up with it that wasn't there. It was adding way too much presence and treble to the sound that wasn't there. And you know what I'm like for treble people as you? It's just a big no-no for me. So, at that point in time, I vowed... I would do this amp review again. I would revisit this amp at some point and I would do it with an SM57 to let you really hear what this thing sounds like. Because the SM57 just has that amazing ability to what the amp sounds like in the room, it captures. But I, I, and again, I, I'll, I will never ever use anything but an SM57 again. You know, uh, maybe occasionally I'll use an SM58 because I quite like the sound of an SM58. But if if I was put against the wall and said, you're only allowed to use one mic for the rest of your life to mic amps up, SM57. It just captures what comes out the speaker so well and perfectly. And I do apologize about my phone. It's just so amazing. So today, Boo Tube, we're revisiting this uh, in incredible amp. I love these things to death. Uh, and like I say, these are basically a solid state version of the Marshall Master Volume head uh, in combo form. Uh, 212 combo. So let's talk specs. So it's a 30 watt amplifier. It's not very loud, people of the tube. I've actually got the volume. The master volume is up on six. This amp can go loud, but you have to gun both gains, and I'll I'll get to them in a sec. And he, and then it's just like you know, it's if you want to use pedals, it's quite difficult. Cause it's it's a proper overdriven sound. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Well, I'll show you that later. Anyway, uh, but yeah, it's a single channel amp. Well, technically two channel amp, but technically kind of a single channel thing. Um, well, technically not, actually, Dave. Technically, it's a free channel amp. I'm an idiot. Uh, you got your basic kind of like EQ section, presence, bass, middle, treble. You've got a master volume. You've got a normal gain and a bright gain. And this is what I mean about free channels. You have free inputs on the right side of the amp here. You've got normal mix, which is both channels jumper together, like you would with a Marshall Plexi, where you jumper both channels. And then you have the bright channel. And again, you've got individual volumes for each. So the really cool thing is when you plug into the mix start, uh, input on this amp, you can dial in the amp. Basically, the gains become tone controls. So you can have more bass or more treble. And it's just fantastic. And this is one of the reasons why I think one of my favorite amps of all time is a Plexi. Because they're just so easy to work with. For, well, for me, anyway, I, I've always found like Plexis to be one of the easiest amps I've ever plugged into in my life to get a sound I love. Uh, I just, I love them. Hence why I've got my studio vintage downstairs because that is literally like, you know, amazing. I love that thing. And these, and this is basically the same deal. You know, it's exactly the same deal. Uh, there's no effects loop. There's no foot switching. There's no reverb. There's no tremolo. There's absolutely nothing. What you see is what you get. Uh, it's got two 12-inch Celestian Blackback speakers in it. And that's it. It's really, really thin as well, people too. It's literally about this thin. It's really, really skinny. Um, and it weighs absolutely nothing. It's so light. Uh, I would almost hazard to say this is about the same weight as a Boss Katana. It's ridiculous. So this dates to the 12th of May. I think it's the 12th of May, 1977. So it's nearly coming up on its birthday, people too. 
And again, these things are just amazing. And this is one of those amps from YouTube that I never, ever, 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 ever want to get rid of, ever lose. I just, I just love it too much. I just cannot, and I could not ever bring myself to part with it. It's just too good. Uh, and it's just amazing. So yeah, 30 watts, solid state from 1977. Like one of the second, like this is the second ever model of solid state amps that Marshall ever produced. So it's proper Marshall amp history, and I'm, I'm just in love with that concept. You know, I love the fact that I own one of these things. One came up for sale actually recently near me. Uh, again, because these things are really cheap. These things do not command like you know thousands of pounds. You know, you can only get these for like I got this one for like a hundred quid, and the one for sale near me is a hundred and fifty. And I was so tempted to get another one. And I'm like thinking, Dave, seriously, come on, boy. Go and get it now. And I didn't. Anyway. <laughs> Moving along, he's an idiot. Uh, but yeah, so. But this thing is amazing. It takes pedals amazingly. Plug in straight into it, you get all this martial grunt and grind. It's just... Oh, heaven. It's just heaven. Heaven and a half shell. Anyway. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, though. Rest, uh, uh, reference. Anyway, when did it? It was always Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then they changed it to Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, didn't they? Because they couldn't have mutant. Weird. Anyway, that's not on the point of this video. So yeah, we're gonna mic up the SM57 uh, today. Uh, mic in the right speaker. It's not close mic'd as usual. I don't like close micing. You you lose a lot of the sound of the actual cab and amp when you close mic, and I really don't like it. Um. So yeah, I'm going to show you my pedal board first, then we're just going to plug uh, my Mr. White in straight, and then we're going to plug a Les Paul into it straight, and that'll be that people I'm just going to mess around with it. But this thing takes pedals like nobody's business. Let you know how I've got it set up for my pedal board as well. So master volume at this point in time is at 6 on the dial, which is basically 1 o'clock. Uh, presence is at 1 o'clock as well. No bass, because don't need it. Uh, again, like the same thing with a lot of old marshals. When you start kind of bringing up the bass, they tend to flub out, and you kind of don't really need to use it at all. And again, that's something I've, I've found. Yeah, you can never get enough low end off the guitar. You know, you need it to sit in the mid range, and adding low end sometimes can muddy the waters. So no bass. Uh, middle is at two o'clock, so just above the presence of one o'clock. Treble, I've got at 11 o'clock. Yes, have to use treble on this amp because it's one of those older Marshalls that are darker sounding. They're a lot darker than the modern ones. So, like, things started to get like really bright in the 90s with like the JCM 900, even though the JCM 900 and the 800 can do really dark guitar tones. Um, and also the, the Mark II Super Leads are really bright. Uh, but these... They're, they're, because of the speakers, this amp is, is a, it's a quite dark amp, so I have to, you know, turn up the treble. And, and in all fairness, that makes me happy because it gives me more options to sculpt the sound I want out of it. So treble is at 11 o'clock. Normal gain, which is kind of like, you know, a bass channel, if you will. It's like that really kind of like, uh, it's, it's, it's input two on a plexi. I've got that at one o'clock, so it's quite, yeah, it's quite gunned. Again, uh, I'll, I'll, no, wait, Dave. I was going to say something again, but we'll get to it in a sec. And I've got the bright gain at uh, 2 o'clock. So it's quite gunned as well. This amp is clean as a whistle until you get these vol the, the, the gains past uh, 3 o'clock. Basically past 8. Uh, this amp does not break up at all until you get to that point. It's just clean. Uh, and I will show you that, people, too. When, when we get to show my pedal board in a second, I'll show you the amp clean to start with, uh, no reverb either, so we'll turn it off now. And uh, just let you hear what this amp sounds like, and it's just a great pedal platform. Again, not massively loud. I reckon you could gig with this thing. You definitely could gig with it, but you'd have to run the, the master volume quite high. Um, not really a problem. These things are built to last, but uh, it'd be one of those amps that if you're going to use it live, you want to mic it up. You know what I mean? You really would want to mic it up. And also don't have it on the floor. I, in all fairness, I really hate having amps on the floor, but I've got to do it today because I've got nothing to put it on. But um, but yeah, I always prefer amps elevated. I, I really don't like the idea of an amp on the floor. I feel you you get a lot of rumble uh, from, uh, from... You get like added bass from the floor, especially if it's kind of like a hollow floor or anything of a hollow stage. Anyway, that's not that's irrelevant. Another video for another time. Uh, but yeah, that's it. It's simple, easy peasy. 
again, there's no bells and whistles on this thing, and I love that. You know, I, I, I'm not. I, I don't like spending hours and hours of, of dialing in amplifiers. I like to be able to just play. You know, I don't want to have to spend hours like tweaking these things. I just want to be able to play these things. So, and this is just again. I've never had any problem with Plexi style amps in my life, uh, which is probably the reason why I run my amps very much in a similar way. But I just find I've never struggled with that kind of thing. And this amp is no different to that because basically that's exactly what this is. And it just sounds like a Marshall. You know, it sounds like a vintage Marshall and it's amazing. I really do love it. And yeah, it's light, skinny, doesn't weigh anything. It's big. It's a very big amp. It could be a 212, but... They're fantastic. And again, I really do... Re if you're after, like, you know, something like this, this is what you want to kind of go for. They are quite hard to find. They are quite rare. Um, but they're so worth it. Anyway, Pucci, I'm going to shut up. Oh, we're in the mix dial... Uh, mix con uh, input as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. But I'm going to shut up now, and we're going to play some music uh, through the Marshall Master Lead Combo. So, pedal board first. Um, no effects, and then we'll start layering some effects on let you hear it. So, let's go. <laughs>
Hello, YouTube. As you can hear, this thing sounds absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal with pedals. It just takes them so well. And again, it it it, it really it's just a great platform for it because again, how clean it is on the dials. You know what I mean? It, this thing never breaks up until you get those normal, the normal and the and the, uh, what's it called, the bright gain, really high. But once it's past three o'clock, you're into distortion territory. But up to that point, it's really, really clean and great for pedals. And it's loud, but it's not kind of deafening, and it's a really pleasant sound. Like, really pleasant. Those blackback Celestian speakers in there are so warm and round. Uh, and again, because, yeah, they're, they're old now as well, they've really rounded out. They're fantastic. And again, this amp, absolutely... Heaven. Heaven, people of YouTube. Heaven! I love it to bits. I absolutely love it to bits. It's fantastic. I love it. I couldn't be without it. I really actually couldn't be without this amp. I just, I can't. It's just insane. <sighs> anyway, now what we're going to do, people, is going to go straight into it with uh, Mr. White, and then we'll probably let's pull into it as well. And I'm just going to play around the dials and get some different sounds for you. So, um, yeah, let's uh, unplug the paddle board straight into... I think we'll go into the mix, actually. I, I might unplug, but we'll start off in the mix channels, which is both channels together, and, and we'll see where we go. I'm going to start with kind of cleanish, and we'll work our way up to kind of like a overdrawn sound. This thing doesn't do mass distortion. It's not that kind of amp. It's a very classic rock kind of amp, you know. Think ACDC. Uh, but it's amazing. So, uh, without further ado, doodles, let's plug straight in. And go.
Uh, there you go, there's some uh, clean tones from single chords and humbucker tones and distortion and all that kind of thing. It's fantastic. I hope it, uh, again, as usual, I always hope the sound comes across okay in these videos. I'm always terrified that it's, it, it doesn't come across how it, how it sounds in the room. Um, which is my biggest fear, actually, when making videos. It's, it doesn't sound very good. Anyway, um, hopefully that came across okay. I was in a bit of a fight with the Hondo today. It needs a bit of a... It, the, the setup's wandered on it a bit. I think due to all the weird weather, like really cold winter, it's wondered. Uh, so I need to do a bit of a setup on that guitar at some point because it was just it was fighting me today, and it was really, really, really struggle to play that when it when guitars fight and yeah, it just wasn't particularly happy. It's like Dave, I'm not, I'm not prepared for this. Anyway, I don't know what else to say for you. Marshall Master Lead Combo. These things are amazing. Like I say, if you're if you're after something like a mar like a classic Marshall kind of tone, uh, look no further. Again, these things, like I say, these things do not command a, like a premium price. These things aren't like, oh my god, my bank account is going to suffer. 
you know, they're not expensive, expensive amps. You know, like I said, I got this one for about 100 quid. And uh, that's normally kind of what they go for. They're not really desirable. They should be. Hang on a minute. No, they're rubbish. Uh, th th this is probably the worst Marshall ever made. So you should definitely not go and buy one. Okay? Don't worry about me. I I'll take care of them all. It'll be o they'll be okay with me. I don't mind having, you know, some really bad amps around. Uh, it's fine, honestly. So, yeah. Uh, uh, what amp? No, no, there's no such thing as a Marshall Master uh, lead combo. No, they don't exist. Uh, so, anyway. Um, thanks for watching this video on absolutely nothing. And uh, I will see you again very soon for another one, I'm sure, with maybe something in it. And, uh, yeah, um, have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. Goodbye now. I think I got away with it.